Hello and welcome to another yu gi video, and today we're going to be going on a regional vlog to the Reading WCQ 2020. So for this event, I decided that I would play Lunar Lights. Now, it's a deck that I've had mixed levels of success with in the past, uh, but it's definitely a contender for the current format, so I think it's quite an interesting option to play with. Plus, I just love summoning loads of the rank 4s, and in addition to that, the brand new Time Thief support just came out, which means there's some interesting plays that you can actually make for your first turn. In Yu-Gi-Oh! there are various competitive goals that you can set yourself. My personal goals are very sort of few. So I wanted to be able to top a regional, uh, which I have now done. I wanted to be able to top nationals, which I've done. Um, I wanted to win a deck box, which is still something I actually need to do. Um, and there aren't really many other sort of competitive goals I've set myself. Really, I just sort of focus on playing sort of random fun stuff and trying to summon Yazzie as much as possible. So winning a deck box is the real goal for this particular um, regional that I'm going to. Um, so there are two regionals I can actually attend, there aren't very many that I can generally go to um, in the UK because uh, I live sort of in the middle of nowhere and I don't have a lot of time at the weekends. Uh, so two shots to try and take home this deck box. And the brand new deck box looks really really nice, it's one of the taller versions, it's got that slot for the dice as well, very important because it means it's actually, you know, useful for the current format. Okay, so as with building any deck for a competitive event, there's quite a lot of time that goes into, you know, thinking about what options you have, but mostly I've just been desperately trying to find particular cards, and as a result, you can probably have a look at the mess that we've got down here. Um, just piles and piles of cards. It's really quite a mess, <laughs> and um, hopefully that's not going to be too much of an issue when I'm actually putting everything together, I think I've got a, a rough idea of what I'm going to be playing. Um, but there are still some options that I definitely need to be thinking about when I'm actually putting this all together. But hopefully it will all be fine. It was not fine. So the Reading WCQ. I arrived at the venue a little bit later than I wanted to, uh, probably about five minutes before the event was actually due to start, which means I did not have very long to submit my deck list and do all the recording setup that I actually wanted to do. Now this was an event without Wi-Fi and I basically decided if I wasn't going to be streaming matches, uh, given the space available at the venue, it wouldn't be the best place to do some recording of actual like top cut matches kind of thing. Um, so instead of that, Arrived pretty late, bit flustered, submitted everything. The zip on my bag broke, so that was great. Um, I actually went to the wrong car park the first time around, accidentally went to a short stay car park, so I had to then drive to another car park, so that ate up like another 10 minutes or something. So really not the best start to <laughs> an event where you wanna go in feeling pretty relaxed and like prepared to actually take on the day. Um, that said, not a problem. Arrived at the venue, um, it was Eclectic Games in Reading, so it's a little shop down an alleyway. Quite a nice setting actually, the whole of the downstairs floor is just filled with hundreds of games, card games, board games of all kinds that you could possibly imagine. Plus plenty of accessories like dice and sleeves, so everything you really need was available there. And then upstairs they had sort of the, the first floor was one big room where the event was happening and then a few smaller rooms and toilets and things like that. Um, but because it is, you know, a shop essentially, is space is a little bit limited. So you were like a little bit squished in, but not too much, you know, typical UK regional to be honest. So round one began, I was going up against Heroes, uh, piloted by Tommy, his profile you can now see on the channel. Um, and what happened was, game one I had a fairly good hand, but screwed up the combo, made a suboptimal board. It was still a pretty good board, but just not, not anything amazing, and he was able to pick it apart. And we played a fairly long game, um, because it was like, oh, Utopia double exists, not a problem. Um, but he ended up winning that one, because I just was never able to amass enough resources to take him out. Game two, I pretty much just swifted him. 
Uh, and then in game three, we had about four minutes left on the clock. So he goes first, sets up a board with like plasma and stuff. And I just have no way to deal the damage. And uh, we end up with a draw on that one. So not the best start, given that in order to win this uh, deck box, I need to be going X1 at worst. Um, so X11 might not actually secure a deck box. And, you know, having anything worse is just going to be an issue. But that's, that's fine. Um, so round two, I go up against Rituals. Uh, this is a very swift 2-0, he just can't amass anything. Uh, round 3, I go up against a kind of a mirror match. Uh, so he's playing the Kali Yuga build. Uh, game 1, I set up my board and he can't break it. Game 2, he sets up the Kali Yuga board and I just scoop immediately and we go into game 3, which I win because I don't have to OTK him, but I just amass enough resources that he can't power through my board. Uh, round 4, I go up against Nick who is playing Magical Musketeers. You can see his deck profile on the channel as well, but not from that event. Um, so at the Reading Regional, um, we play a match in which I set up a really good board, but it doesn't matter because it does nothing against any of the musket cards, so he takes home the first game. And then in game two, I set up a, a different board because I'm trying to play around things a little bit more. Um, but again, he sets up really strong. He breaks through each of my components. And then we're in a game state where I can actually win if I make Utopia double, but I don't want him to be able to use Cross Dominator in battle phase. So I'm like, okay, I'll use my Tiger King to negate everything, and then after that I'll attack with Utopia double, and I'm like, oh, oh dear, I, I have no place where I can put my Utopia double now. What I didn't realise, because I'm blind, was that uh, his Ningirsu was on the field and pointing to my field. I could have just used the zone that that arrow afforded me and made it into a draw instead of a loss. But instead of doing that, we ended with uh, me losing that one, and then we move on to the next round, which is round number, what are we on now? One, two, three, four, five. Uh, so I go up against Altergeist. This is a match you can't really lose, even though your opponent does main deck evenly matched. Even if they resolve that, you play Redoer, so you're just never gonna lose that one. Just Redoer Trap every single time wins you the match, basically. Uh, round six, I went up against Dinosaurs. Not something I'd really tested against. It hadn't been a popular pick before this event. Um, and I just got blown out by an ultimate conductor, basically. There was one point when uh, a very hard misplay by myself could have won me game one. Um, but unfortunately, didn't see that line. Ended up losing that one. Unfortunate 0-2 there. Um, and then final round against Mech Knights. Very free matchup. Um, it's kind of weird because it should be very difficult because you give them multiple columns with your Tigers. But it just doesn't matter ultimately. So ended with an X2-1 record. Uh, if I turned one of those losses into a win, potentially could have taken a deck box, but no deck box, no top cut, unfortunately. Uh, so the next regional is going to be at Fratton. Um, so this is basically in Portsmouth, um, and it's going to be at the start of March. So very, very different, and I'm going to be shaking things up a little bit with this one. Potentially not taking Moonlight, might take something else instead. Magical Hero is going to be out, so very different format, and we'll see what happens. So I've been spending some time speaking to people with slightly more competitive know-how than myself and basically the suggestion is if you want to top a regional right now, play Spiral uh, or Endymion. So plan is to pick up three Magician Souls, then uh, it's going to be a bit pricey given that they're each £60, which is about $80 at the moment. So $240 to drop on some trading cards is not the ideal. So instead of just splashing out in the cash, we're gonna try and trade our way into those three Magician Souls and then ship them up immediately after we uh, play the event. So I've managed to organize a trade with this guy called Angelo Gomez. Um, and basically I'm gonna be trading all of this stuff for his three Magician Souls. And uh, yeah, that was the plan, it turns out he doesn't exist. Um, so I got scammed. And this is the first time I've ever had this experience with the online trading uh, community. And it really sucks. Um, but basically, never trade with a guy called Angelo Gomez. And if you guys are trading with anyone in the Bristol area, just be a little bit careful because there is a guy out there who's more than happy to take your cards and give you nothing in exchange. Um, hopefully we're going to be able to sort this out and uh, deal with this guy because he's been ripping people off all over the place and it just 
needs to be shut down. But ultimately now I have five days to pick up three copies of Magician's Souls and trading is going to be very difficult because obviously I've just traded away a load of my more tradable stuff and uh, we're now stuck in a bit of a sticky situation. But without those Magician's Souls I'm not going to be able to play at this event so I'm going to need to find a way. Okay, so uh, today we're going to the Fratton Regional, or Portsmouth Regional, I guess. Uh, things didn't go quite as well as we'd hoped with the previous regional. I thought I'd switch to uh, a deck with a slightly higher ceiling. So uh, following in the advice of a Mr. Johnny Lee, we're uh, going for low-carb food today. There's a rail replacement on today, which means half the journey's going to be on a bus, and uh, going to be a little bit later. So hopefully that's you know, not going to impact the event too much. I imagine things will run on a little bit later and they'll probably just be accommodating the fact that nobody can really get there. So the uh, bus slash train journey is now over, which means we are in Bradford. And uh, it's time to actually find out where this event is. It's happening in the Royal British Legion. Um, and we're gonna just Google Maps our way into this place. Five minutes, let's go. So today's event is in the Royal British Legion Club, uh, which we have just arrived at, which we can see here. Available for pretty much anyone to uh, make bookings and uh, run events, so hopefully pretty strong community here and we're going to see what it's like inside. Hey look, it's the judge. <laughs> Welcome to Portsmouth Regional. You trash. So far. <laughs> Is it ever not trash? Thank <laughs> you. 
Trash. Now because it's not hosted in a shop, the Portsmouth Regional is a great place to actually record some footage and uh, they were very very happy uh, to allow me to actually record some footage, going into the venue, taking a look around and uh, showing you guys some actual matches as well. So definitely if you guys are in the Portsmouth area, give the locals a shout, take a look into what you can do and support them because they're supporting us and we can build a nice little cycle of support for everyone here. On top of having a lot of space, definitely for a UK regional, normally you're a little bit cramped, there was actually plenty of room for all the players at this event. Uh, they had a really great judging team with Billy Vowell heading up the judges there. It was really amazing to be able to film in the venue, and of course, before everything starts, there's always this great atmosphere of people just chatting, chilling, doing a bit of trading, trying to get their decks bolted up so that ahead of the event or ahead of future events, they can actually play exactly what they want to. And uh, I think this is one of the real highlights of the UK regional community is pre-event there's just such a great atmosphere everywhere uh, post event obviously people start going home so people are in a bit of a rush but beforehand just great to be able to chill and hang out with some friends now this was one of the events where I brought a lot of kits and thankfully I was able to put it to good use I spoke to the TOs and the organizers and uh, was able to record some actual matches as well as deck profiles from this event. Now I won't give you any spoilers because I did record some of my own matches, uh, but needless to say uh, I did not take home a deck box this time around, otherwise I'd be holding it right now unfortunately. I just have my little black one here. Um, so going X3, um, I guess that's another competitive achievement. I've never gone X3 drop before, this is my first one. Um, but needless to say, drawing multiple copies of Where Art Thou is just not very good, especially when you don't see a single level 1 monster. So maybe I'll be moving away from the sort of combo S decks, decks for a while and moving back towards the sort of uh, control decks that I think I generally prefer playing. I like the way that uh, the thinking happens a little bit more and apparently I have slightly more success with them. Unless we enter an FTK format, in which case you can bet I'll be giving one of those a go. So the next event won't be until post Master Rule 5 and post Dual Overload. Um, and there's a lot of great stuff that's coming out in uh, both of those. You know, we're going to see the rise of tons of really cool decks. I think Echo might actually happen before my next competitive event as well. Um, so I'm going to be trying to go to one more regional this season, see if I can get into uh, Top Cut, take home a deck box and hopefully try and get my Euros invite. Uh, because I think regardless I'm going to be going to Euros just to hang out with friends and see what it's like. But I'd really like to be able to compete at this one, so um, let's just see what happens in the next video. Thanks for watching guys, let me know what you think, try and check out my lists in the description if you're interested and want to give them a go, um, and maybe you can take those to an event and actually take home a top, which I unfortunately was not able to do this time, but hey, maybe it's down to the player and not the deck. We'll see you guys in the next video.